If you love basketball and love to watch it and want it right here for you, this is the building for you. Every facility on major university campuses, including academic areas, they have a lifespan. And certainly um, our venerable Irwin Center, a palace, if you will, when it was constructed, was birthed in 1977 in terms of opening its doors. And at the time, it was probably the signature multi-purpose arena on any university campus. When you look around the country, college athletics is in a race almost to improve facilities. That was going to become a necessity at some point for our basketball facility, which also houses, as you know, the, some of the greatest music and arts and performances and entertainment that Austin could imagine. Obviously, we're on UT campus and our main goal is to have a venue for the, the basketball team. This is their new home. So that was always in mind, and that's where you see Matthew McConaughey come in with a lot of the design elements that being, you know, pretty much the spokesperson for Austin and for UT, he came in to make sure that the way that we designed it, that we we amplified what was so good about UT and the fan base here. It is singularly the most unique deal for any publicly funded institution in the country that Oakview Group is delivering and has delivered to us a roughly a $370 million arena. They are managing the arena with their staff, their team, not Texas Athletics or UT employees. And uh, we will have 65 days in the building per year for men and women's basketball and other significant events on now President Jay Hartzell's calendar, graduations, career fairs, those type of things. Uh, what a gift. <laughs> When you build a venue that's built in mind for concerts and sports, what, what's different is that when you have a sports team being the main tenant, you limit yourself, let's just say a pro team, you limit yourself a little bit because you have to blackout dates for your whole season and the potential of playoffs. Here, we're, we have a, a more grasp of our, our, I'm sorry, our basketball schedule, so we can plan around that. So what would normally be a dead day, where our company comes in is that we fill those days with shows. So now the revenue is generating at, at a different um, level than it would if you just built a venue specifically for sports. We partnered with local C3 and Live Nation here. Why that's important is because we're now able to bring in different types of shows that normally passed up Austin. And we've had Justin Bieber, we have George Strait, Willie Nelson, first time share the stage. We have the Eagles come through. Jimmy Buffett just played. We have UFC, which was the highest grossing performance that they've had. And I think it's North America. You have a lot of shows coming to Austin that just didn't have the capabilities before now make Austin a primary stop for them. Unfortunately, when we had the Owen Center, crossing MLK may as well have been going to Mars or the moon for, for many students. They just didn't want to go there. There's no excuse now. It is easy to get to. You don't have to cross, you know, four lanes of traffic. Don't have to wait on lights. You just traverse right up beside the football stadium and you're in the house. And again, you're in the house, you go down to your seats and you are in the best seats in the house. So. I think our student attendance, which has been very good for men's games historically, um, up and down for our women, depending upon how competitive our women's teams are. But I believe in my heart that we can get back to the, the glory days. For example, in the 80s, when Coach Conrad's teams were averaging 8,000 a game, a lot of those fans were students. And I still have people today who come up and say, I watched those teams. You know, the year we won it in 86, I was in the stands for every game and they were students then. I think this location will really, really benefit our women's basketball student attendance and keep our men's basketball attendance at a zenith as well. And we wanna really integrate the community into the types of things that the shows, everything that we're providing. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. We're really at the beginning stages of that, but it's really just a place that 
we can bring people together of all backgrounds, all races, all um, ethnicities in, in, in any part of um, Austin and the surrounding communities. So more to come from us. We have some work to do, especially we have a little bit of downtime in July before Kendrick Lamar comes and blesses the stage. Um, but that's that's where we want to be and that's where we'll always work to be. People in Austin who witnessed the late 70s uh, when Frank Irwin was the chair of our Board of Regents, Governor Conley uh, was in the State House. That era for the University of Texas probably had very similar looking projects. I mean, think about LBJ Library, think about the Irwin Center, Dishfalk Field, which today is UFCU Dishfalk Field, opened in 75. The upper deck on the stadium um, was a late 60s project, and that was spawned by Daryl winning the championship in 63 and again in 69. I mean, the alums got galvanized and said, we're going to build a bigger, better stadium. All of those projects, to me, created what we experience today as the, the University of Texas we know. Back in that era, it probably felt very much like what we're doing with the, the Moody Center, to be fair. It's just generations later that uh, we're experiencing this with, again, a, a city of two million plus people that is hungry for this type of venue, this type of hospitality, that this type of entertainment, and this level of sports. <laughs>